do? How do they do that? Tell us more. Thank you, Mavis. Um, before uh, we uh, are hooked up for this program, I passed by uh, one woman who sells both uh, Kenke and Wachi in Wa here. And I sought to find out uh, where he is, uh, where she comes from. As she said, she comes from the Ashanti region but she's been in Upper West for quite a number of years working here. I mean, she migrated from the Ashanti region to the Upper West for greener pastures. And she also sells, of course, including fish. So I ask her whether she's aware that uh, fishes migrate and she was surprised. So I said, yes, uh, the Understanding is that the fish that uh, you mostly get on your table for sale do migrate. And uh, maybe in 2022, Ghana joined uh, the rest of the world to celebrate the first World Fish Migration Day. And this year too, uh, something is being done about the migration. But how do the fish migrate? Do they migrate for economic reasons? Do they migrate because of conflicts at where they are? We do not know much, but the fact remains that fishes migrate from wherever they are in the course of the year to a different place for a purpose. And that is what we want to find out from the head of Black Water Vision of the Water Resources Commission, Dr. Joachim are you where Abunga? Uh, he is going to tell us how do the fish migrate? Why do they migrate? And how are they able to go back to where they migrate from? And that is what is going to inform our conversation. Uh, doctor, welcome to uh, Real Time Live on GBC News. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, Fish migration, we know it is only people who migrate, but you are telling us that fish also migrate. How do they do that? Thank you once again. Fish migrate just like human beings. And they migrate for several purposes. Number one, fish migrate to look for better areas that they can stay, they can live peacefully. Number two, Fish also migrate when they want to spawn. They look for areas that they can lay and then they can reproduce. So apart from that, generally it is also a lifestyle that is typical for all kinds of fishes, that they are able to migrate, to do other things, and then um, it supports their reproductive processes. So sometimes they travel even 10,000 kilometers just to do that and then they come back. You say when they want to spawn, what do you mean by spawning? Yes, yeah, spawning is more like reproduction. They go and they reproduce, they lay their eggs and then they come back. When they hatch, then they, 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 the pool of fish or fingerlings follow the mother and then they go back. So it is a reproductive process for all fishes. And why do we have to observe the fish migration day? Yes, fish migration day is very important because we all enjoy fish. And to allow them to reproduce, to increase in numbers, will enable us to have more fish for our meals. If we cut everything that is in the rivers, that is in our dams, without allowing them to reproduce, you have less for our consumption. That can end up reducing the fish stock in our reservoirs, the fish stock in our rivers. But that process allows them to be able to go through that process to increase in numbers so that we can have more fish, we can increase our economic activities as well. 
But doctor, how do I differentiate between a fish that is migrating and fish that is not, okay. if I'm a fisherman? Fish normally migrate within certain periods. And there are periods that fish will migrate from one part to the other to undertake that activity. So it is something that we as practitioners must know and must be able to educate the communities, especially the fisher folks that depend on them, to be able to understand and appreciate that so that they can do it well. So for example, once you have uh, the rainy season um, ending, just like we have the closed season in the coastal waters, where we say that there's no fishing within that period, it is the same for inland, for our rivers and for our dams. Normally, there's a period that we should allow them to go and spawn and then to produce. So there's time for that. And what, what time is it? So for the black volta, normally, we say between July and September, normally we should allow the fishes to go and spawn, to go and reproduce, and then to come back. So that is the time we use. But for other areas like the coastal, there are also times that they, they declare as a, a period for them that you close the season and not, no fishing is done to allow them to be able to to, 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 to reproduce. Yeah, so I know uh, the Black Volta Basin is concerned about some activities along water bodies. What are some of the activities that affect uh, the production of fish? Yeah, number one, we have this area of the, the basin that is basically agricultural base. A lot of activities in terms of reproduction for uh, production in terms of agricultural areas. Most of the agricultural activities are now dependent on chemicals, weedicides, and even um, some fertilizers are now in the form of uh, chemicals. These are applied and they are washed directly into the water bodies. So directly it affects the fish. Some fishes are not able to survive it, so they die. Others, to some extent, are able to live and then they are not able to reproduce. So that also reduces the population. So that is one of the kind of agricultural activities that we carry out here affects our water bodies and in terms also uh, moving to the water, uh, the water bodies. Then also mining. We have a lot of mining activities that are ongoing now. With a lot of chemicals used, these pollute our water bodies and also kills the fishes within the water. The last, which I will say, is over-exploitation. Now, there are a lot of people, farmers, fish farmers, who are interested in fish fishing, but the stock is decreasing. And once we over-exploit, reduce the numbers, and so we have less fish for people to harvest. Do you also have a problem with the kind of nets that are used for fishing? The kind of net fishermen use is one of the problems. Because the fish population is reducing, now people will find all means to catch fish. So all they do is, depending on the kind of mat material that will help them to be able to get the fish, they use. So you, they use even mosquito nets to be able to catch fish. And that is happening even within our rivers. That is happening. So what are the implications of these actions the on fish production? The implication is clear. Reduction in fish population, reduction in economic activities that are directly linked to fishing and the fishing sector within the basin. That is what we are contending with now. So this year, uh, your office is uh, doing some activities about well, Fish Migration Day. What, what is the team and what informs it? So this year, globally, we are celebrating World Fish Migration Day with the team, free flow, allowing water to flow freely so that we are able to allow the fishes to undertake that mandatory activity that is required of them to increase the numbers. It is also a tool or a team that we are using 
to encourage the preservation and conservation of water activities or water bodies within the basin. And that is what globally uh, we are using. So we are targeting activities that takes away water weeds, activities that reduces sediments going into our water bodies or our rivers, so as to have free flow for all water bodies for the fishes to undertake their mandatory activities. So uh, apart from uh, using fish for food, what are the other uh, benefits that the fishing industry contributes? We have, fishing, we have fish oil that is used in the production of some um, tablets. Also, some, some of the pharmaceutical industries are using them. In fact, in some of the areas, they are even used as treatments for some kinds of conditions. That is also one of the areas. Apart from the fact that it provides money, resources for people, once they are able to sell it, they also get money. That supports their livelihood activities. But there are some who argue that the fish uh, are created by God. So why should they be worried about uh, the fish finishing? Yes, fish are created by God. And naturally, if we don't disturb the environment that they find themselves, maybe they won't reduce. But the current situation is that we try, we chase them even to their environment. And so if you destroy the environment with chemicals, if you salt the rivers, we salt the dams, they will have no water. If there's no water, the fishes cannot survive. Secondly, if the water is polluted, the fishes cannot survive. So we need to be worried, even though they are created by God. If we allow the environment naturally, the fishes will continue to thrive. They will con con continue to increase in numbers. But our case is that we destroy the environment that the fishes live in. And that is why we need to be concerned, even though they are created by, uh, by God. There are also uh, people who think that the fingerlings uh, is very nutritious and cheaper compared to the big ones. So why do you think they should not catch these uh, fingerlings? The fingerlings are the young ones of the big fish. They are the children of the grown-up fishes, literally to say. So if you catch the young ones, then you will not have the big ones in future. Because you will catch the young ones and eventually catch the big ones in addition. So which one will now grow to reproduce again? There will be no fish. So we advise that there are some kinds of fishes that even if they grow, they are they are they may be three, five, six years, but they are smaller. Those ones are different. But don't cut fingerlings because once you do that, you are drastically reducing the fish population in our water bodies. So when, when the fishermen or fisherwomen uh, sees harvesting the fish during this period, what will they be doing? So that is why the commission and other partners are introducing alternative livelihood activities for these farmers. We are also taking them into aquaculture. That is, in other sense, red and fish. So we are providing some with some nets that they can do the aquaculture within dams. And then they are managing and protecting the dams. And then at the same time, having the same fish that they would have gotten from the river to allow the fishes to go through that process. So we are doing that as one of the interventions. We are also supporting others into uh, those who, are, who want to do agriculture, dry season farming, we are supporting them to do that. And those are some of the interventions we are supporting them as part of alternative livelihood activities. Uh, Dr. Ayue, uh, these activities uh, are supposed to catch across. If, for instance, Ghana is doing what you are talking about, and the other countries where the fish come from do not do what you are doing, what would be the implication? The Volta, the Black Volta is part of the Volta River Basin System. So we have agreement, we have what we call the Water Charter, developed by the Volta Basin Authority, and that defines what happens within the Volta Basin. And so um, we have activity, joint activities between the two countries, and we are together able to regulate what happens among the countries that share the Volta system to be able to control these activities. So whatever Ghana is doing, our neighbors are doing similar things to make sure that we have our water bodies protected for fishes to be there, 
and for water to be there for everybody to use. But uh, do, do, is there a special route for the fish that is created for them to migrate or they do they migrate through this uh, ordinary? Uh, Unfortunately, fish. that is what we are looking at. We are trying to come out with a policy that will allow barriers to be broken, to be able to allow fishes to migrate to undertake that ma ma mandatory purpose. And alternatively, also providing a mechanism to allow them to migrate, to undertake that mandatory reproductive activity. That is what we are driving at. We are driving at eventually coming out with a policy that will tackle this particular issue. That is what we are looking at. Yes. So the process is to throw more light on the need to have fish migration, and then eventually we will cascade that into getting a policy that will target that particular fish migratory activity. Yes, so you talk about a barrier. What, what, what barrier are you referring to? Barriers refers to reservoirs. It refers to dams. A typical example is a Bui hydroelectric dam. If you look at it, it is constructed said that you don't allow water that goes down the speedway or the, the generation station to come back. But normally you should be able to allow fishes that are born that way to come back to spawn. So those are some of the things we are looking at. How can we inculcate that or introduce that into the structure to allow the fishes to migrate? That is what we are looking at. Not necessarily breaking the structure, but introducing that to allow the fishes to be able to migrate. So what will it, what, what will it take to do that? This is policy because hydraulic infrastructure require a head to generate energy. And so you may not necessarily just releasing the water. So we need to have that done to be able to have um, to have the fish being able to do that. So we need to have a policy that drives that change. A policy that supports what we are doing and then we can have it done for the country. So as uh, you observe World Fish Migration Day, what message does Water Resources Commission have for fishermen and Ghanaians at large? Our message for all fishermen is that we want the water to be healthy so that they will have more fish to harvest. So they should contribute to making sure that the water is healthy, we protect our water bodies, we protect our water resources, so that the fishes will thrive, so that people will continue to depend on the fishes in our water bodies. Thank you. So, uh, Mavis, you've been listening to Dr. Uh, Joachim Ayue Abunga. He's the head of Black Water Basin, uh, talking to us about World uh, Fish Migration Day. And the uh, call by the commission is that we should do our best to protect the fish that migrate from wherever they are to wherever they are going to. This will allow them to be able to spawn so that uh, there will be more fish for you and I to take when we are having our meals. Back to you, Mavis. In Accra. Thank you so much, Swala. We all know that fish now migrate. They, they migrate just like human beings do for better conditions or a peaceful um, area. And again, most importantly, for them to reproduce. So therefore, we should have um, good um, water or clean water to help them to reproduce so we get more fishes to um, eat of course. So we've been coming to you live from Wa in the Upper West region where we are talking about fish migration. 